last episode, after picking up our new crew member, Dom, we sailed from Gibraltar straight to Estepona, where we tried out our very first med mooring. Join us this episode as we leave the anchorage at Estepona to sail up the coast of Fuengarola. We have left Estepona for uh, Fuengarola, and our, we had to wake up at 4 a.m. Weather normal, basically reasonable winds. Uh, running up the coast here until about 1, 2 in the afternoon, apparently. So we're trying to catch that favorable breeze. We have to get up at 4 to leave at 5 a.m. The sun's just coming up to the below horizon right now. We've got a little bit of twilight, some beautiful phosphorescence, uh, some very big rolly waves. Not big, but, you know, a couple of meter rolly waves hitting us on the quarter, which is a bit, you know, did, did, I'm uh, just uncomfortable, but um, that is fine. It's fairly warm. Uh, I do have my get it on the bloody cleat um, sweatshirt on, uh, which is a nautical tradition amongst the Sail Calypso crew. Uh, and that's it. That's the update for right now. The trip to Fuengarola is only about 31 nautical miles, or about seven hours, depending on the winds. This is just a little bit further than our last little jaunt from Gibraltar. The Costa del Sol region of Spain has been described as overbuilt and ugly. There are a lot of really beautiful rugged landscapes as you follow the coast. It's true that there are also a lot of tourist resorts, but the vibe is good and people are generally having fun and just enjoying themselves in the sun. The Costa del Sol runs from just north of Gibraltar up to Nirja on the northern side of the Alborn Sea. Charlie and I were a little bit worried about this trip, as the seas were a bit confused, and we wondered if Dom might suffer from some seasickness. But once again, he was fine, and we all rocked out to the tunes while sailing into the rising sun. With the rugged mountains and the beautiful deep blue waters, it was a joy to thunder along, running before the winds. Of course, to thunder along in a sailboat like Calypso means about hull speed, which is basically a number mainly important to sailing vessels, where the increase in speed to the water meets proportionally higher resistance. So although we can go faster than hull speed, it just takes more and more effort from the sails or the engine to drive us beyond that. So we were happy to make seven knots of speed while drinking in the beauty of nature. We're about uh, halfway between uh, Estepona and uh, Fuengarola and we're, uh, the, the waves have calmed down a bit. You can see and the wind has calmed down. We're in a little pocket of wind, according to predict wind. And so we're following that along and we're going to round to a tiny little point and get into Fuengarola in a couple hours. Um, just, you know, not a bad sail, a bit rolly is all. It started out very rolly. Uh, so now we're getting it, it's calming down a little bit. However, it's supposed to kick up, the wind is supposed to kick up from the uh, west in the afternoon, so hopefully we'll be tucked up in the anchorage by then. Of course, we wasted not a second after arriving in Fuengarola before jumping in the water.
we're in Fuengarola. I just messed up saying that the first time. This is take two, just to show you the magic behind the camera. Um, we're sitting here in this absolutely gorgeous anchorage. Unfortunately, last night we had, uh, I don't know, 15 complete idiot guys driving around on um, jet skis, using the boats as like an obstacle course. Uh, it's surprising nobody got killed. But anyhow, it is a beautiful anchorage. Very, very nice, very calm today. We're going to take Dom out for uh, a last sail before he flies back to the UK um, and just show him the ropes, literally. It's been a pretty, pretty nice chilled night. Uh, very calm in the anchorage. We did have a cat that decided to anchor right across from us, which was a bit of a problem, but uh, we luckily didn't hit him because it was so calm. When we came into this anchorage, it's really easy to approach. You have to watch out for the rocks right off the tip of the, uh, the breakwater there on the outside. And then there's a, a buried or a destroyed old breakwater mole, something over there. That's kind of the northish side of the anchorage. You have to really watch out for that because at night it's only lit by the green marker at the end, not by anything in the middle. So really be careful. But yeah, as you come in here, just watch out for the, uh, the swimming area, anchor in here. We've not had any problems. We read that maybe the, the Guardia Civil had moved people on, but I think they've been here too long. So it's, it's a beautiful anchorage, no problems at all. It's about five meters deep, sandy bottom. Drop the hook, pull back on it, got it set really nicely. That is a, an interesting thing that I've, I've found out, we found out over time. It's probably worth sharing for some people. Most people will laugh because they know this, but. When you drop your anchor, we try to drop about, let's say it's 10 meters deep, we'll drop about, um, sorry, let's say it's five meters deep. We'll drop about 10 meters of anchor and then back away from it at about 1,000 RPM and then drop another 10 meters of it so we have a four to one scope and then we back against that at 1,500 to really set the anchor and we've not had any problems at all. I call this a beautiful anchorage mainly because it's so well protected from the west, southwest, and somewhat from the south, which are the prevailing wind directions at this time of year. But the bread and cake shop on the near shore doesn't hurt. Well, despite what I said about it being, it was absolutely dead calm in the anchorage. It's a bit sporty out here. We're, it's calmed down a little bit, but we keep getting gusts in the mid to upper 20s. We've got Dom at the helm. Seems to be doing a pretty good job, hasn't killed us yet. Uh, we've got two reefs in the main, two reefs in the Jenny, and we're just essentially tacking back and forth back to Gibraltar. We're not going back there though. We're just having a little play around here. And then we're going to turn around and go back into the marina and get a berth in the marina for tonight. So uh, it should be an action-packed day. A little sailing, maybe walk up to the castle. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Unfortunately, it was now time to say goodbye to Dom. He was a great sport and really helpful for attracting the mozzies away from me. Thanks, Dom. Bye. Dom's a great guy and really fit in with the crew. There are a number of religious festivals in Spain throughout the year and we were lucky enough to be in Fuengarola during the Festival of Carmen. The people of the town carry an effigy in a large circuit of the area near the seashore. Carmen is actually considered the patron saint of fishermen and is also known as Stella Maris, the star of the sea. Due to the festival, we weren't able to get a berth in the marina, and since we only wanted a berth so we could easily reprovision without making a dinghy landing on the beach, and we could have showers, we didn't really need it, and as it turned out, that was incredibly lucky. We are seeing a festival that we, we just happened upon uh, called the Festival of Carmen. Um, and on the 16th of July, they parade a 
uh, statue of Carmen through the streets here, and then take her out to sea on some ships, take her into the port, the um, fishing port, and then they come back and take the statue back through the streets to the church, and then from over there, they have a fireworks display. So we're hoping we have front row seats to this fireworks display. It should be really good. Um, and then tonight, there's a lunar eclipse. So we'll see a partial lunar eclipse. I don't exactly know the time. I need to check that, but it uh, should be interesting. Look at all these boats around us. A lunar eclipse is caused by the Earth's shadow crossing across the face of the moon and blocking the sunlight, throwing the moon into shadow. The reddish color that you sometimes see is caused by sunlight passing through the Earth's atmosphere before falling on the moon. How cool is that? One of the annoying things out here is uh, when people are in the anchorage and don't have lights. It's just, it's almost suicide with this number of boats. There's one right behind us here two right behind us actually they have no lights on whatsoever. Most people are running both their nav lights and their mooring lights which I think makes sense at a time you know as, as busy as it is out here just to let people know where you are. Craziness. And then there are people speeding by at like 30 knots through a crowded anchorage. Insane. <laughs> oh, he's out of power. Ferengaroth, 